Okay, welcome back to uh, part two of my video for my church, my SVG church. Um, when we last left off, we had connected all four of these pieces. And I have gone ahead and connected this piece. All of my siding has been put on. I showed you how to do that in the last video. So what I have done, I've done a little bit more prep work this time. And this is a Vintage Photo Distress Ink. I know you can't see the top because I keep setting this on top, but it's by Ranger. It's Vintage Photo. And this is just one of the little uh, Ranger uh, tools for using uh, alcohol inks or your stamps. And to distress this, all I've done is taken this and just rubbed my pad across it just like this in just various spots and I've gone a little bit heavier on the bottom but that's pretty much it just a little at a time until I got the look I wanted now it will lighten up just a little bit um, once it has been on here for a little bit but that's it and I did that on all four of these pieces so I'm gonna set that aside my my uh, pad was kinda I need to change it so the only other thing I've done is I have made all of the windows because I'm going to attach those next and for the windows, um, as I told you before, you'll have two pieces that look like this. You glue those together. And then you'll have two pieces that are in these long strips. And those go down here at the bottom. And I've used uh, score tape on mine. So I'm going to go ahead and detach this bottom piece here. That's 1 16th of an inch score tape. And apply this top piece. And so that just forms a little ledge. And I'm not distressing any of the um, trim pieces. Only the church uh, cream cardstock parts. Uh, I will distress this top part of the turret when I get to that. As for the door, there are three pieces that look like this that you need to glue together. And then the door is two parts. There's a solid piece. And then there's this other section, and I've just glued those two together. So I'm going to go ahead now and place the door. And I'm just using Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive for my glue. And I'm just going to glue this real quick. And I just want to center it as best I can. Make it flush at the bottom and then center it within this area. I'm give that a few seconds. So I'll press it down good. And then this piece will get glued right inside of here. with the two long pieces at the bottom. It just kind of rests right inside there. I just want to glue it, hold it for a second. Make sure it's down in there good. And then later on I will come back. I have a, you can use a bead you can use a marker and make a dot. I take a uh, very tiny micro mini brad, cut the brads off of it, and that's what I'll use for the doorknob. Uh, another piece we had were these crosses, and there's three of them. You glue those together, and then we're going to glue it on. And you want to go so that this the cross piece is right even with these two points here. 
That'll get you about the right height. I just kind of use that as a guide and kind of center it best as you can between the door there. Okay, and now I'm going to add my windows. And those are simply glued on so that the top of this piece is flush with the bottom of the window. And this is clear drying glue, so if you get some down the side, it's not a huge ordeal. The window. The windows are all the same all the way across. And that's all you do to add your windows. Now, another piece of trim that we have is this large piece right here. And it does have some score lines. And that's because they're going to wrap around. This will be added right here. And then there is another piece for this part, which will be added, whoops, turn it this way, right here. So we can go ahead and put this one on. This one we want to wait uh, because this has to all get connected together. But for these parts, just go ahead and fold your score line down. Just do it a little bit at a time until it starts to fold on that line. And then use a... Um, bone folder or some other tool and score it. You want to get a really good crease on it. Same thing with this other side. Just gently fold until it catches where that score line is. Because you really want that to be right on the score line. And then burnish it. Now you can open this up a little on each side. And what you'll see happens is this is going to make trim for all of this area plus this side piece right here. So we want to go ahead and glue that. You want to add glue to all the areas. I'm going to wish my Glue cap hadn't taken off in a few minutes. And I tend to be a little generous with the glue down in the corners there because it's going to spread out. And you just want to make sure that this is flush at the bottom and then just press it down. I think these are the ones that are, yeah. So you'll have another piece of trim that you will put right back here. And you can use score tape on these if you want, or glue, whichever you are the most comfortable using. Either one will work. So I'm going to drop that right down in there. Make sure it's flush at the bottom and flush at the back. So 
Sometimes bone folders come in handy for lots of different things. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Again, make sure it's flush at the bottom and push back against this edge. There we go. So now you can see we've got our extra trim added. And now, I'm not going to, well, I'll go ahead. I'm hoping my battery doesn't run out on my phone. So I'm trying to kind of hurry this along here. I'll go ahead and add the rest of the windows now. So this we're going to leave alone. Um, like I said, you have this piece of trim, and there's some other pieces of trim, and we'll get to those in a little while. But I'm going to get this out of the way for right now. Because we're going to go ahead and complete this part next. This is the upper part of the steeple. There, you can look at this one. So we're going ahead and fold these on the fold lines. carefully and I'm going to burnish these because I want a good score Then, before we connect it, we have these four pieces which we're going to attach. Now, I'm going to attach these with score tape to make it, I say quicker, but we'll see. This is a piece of scrap plastic that I have. You can save this from your windows when you cut your windows out. And I want to take a small piece, probably about a little bit slight inch square. And um, I'm going to use this, and I'm going to lay it down, and this is alcohol ink. Now, you could use an alcohol marker. You could uh, use, dab it with paint, real watered-down paint, or you can use the alcohol inks. And all I'm going to do is spritz some of this on here, and then I'm going to dab it on this, give it a second or two to kind of dry and I'm going to dab again and you'll start to see how it'll build up with spots like that I kind of want to get more of those if I can so you can kind of blow on it they dry it dries really quick And I just kind of want to get a little bit of a, if I can, pattern on it. 
and then we're going to let that dry. And we want to take that and we want to glue it back here like that. And once it's on here, it becomes darker, but it forms your church window. That's one option. Another option is to take just a scrap of paper. You can put ink on it. You can color it with markers. Or You can use a small piece of scrap paper, which is what I did on this one, in combination with or without alcohol inks, glue them together on the outside edge. And now, glue this on the outside edge, or you use your um, score tape. I'm going to use score tape on mine, the 1 16th inch. And you only need to put it on like two sides and it'll be fine. I just realized on the first video that you can hear my clock ticking in the background. <laughs> So that little ticking you're hearing, that's my clock. And then I'm just going to attach that right there. Then I can pull off these other pieces. And here's kind of a little tip. I use this little pan off to the side. It's where I throw my... Um, strips for my paper backing. Just is easier to reach there than it is um, the trash can sometimes. So this one needs to go on this section right here. So we're just going to follow that design. Make sure it's on the spot where it should go and attach it. Then you will have this little piece, but you don't want to attach that till we do our siding strips. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the rest of these.
Now, once again, this has siding on it. For this piece, it might be easier to go ahead and construct it and then put your siding on, which is what I'm going to do. Because it's so small, it's, easily, it's easy to hold on to. So I've added score tape there. Ugh, try to get it off of here. And then you're going to wrap this around and attach it right up next to the other piece. Now you're going to have a little piece of a tab there, and you'll need to cut that off. And I have a little piece here where it didn't, I didn't get it on straight. I've got glue on my fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that off as well. Probably not good scissors to do that with. There we go. So now we're ready to add our trim to it. There is one last thing I want to do, and that is that you have these three uh, pieces that we cut out of craft board. We're going to attach those to each other. They don't have to be done real neatly, just attach them. And then you have a white piece of cardstock that you're going to attach on the top here. sure why I did that. Maybe because a little bit of it showed. Now this one's bigger so I'm going to trim it up. Okay. Now this piece is going to rest right inside the top here because it forms a base for which this top part to sit on. So just add a little bit of glue. I don't know whether it'd be easier to do it, I guess along the edges here. All the way around. It's going to stay in there pretty good without the glue, but the glue's just to help it along. And now you want to just wedge that down in there. So that it's flush along the top. sure the edges are gluing up next to it. And it should fit in there just nice and easy, nice and flush. It 
check your corners, make sure they're down in there really, really good. And then the next piece is this one, which makes the turret. And we're going to fold it, all, all the folds, and fold them inward. And then you have this last little tab. Now, before you close this up, you have a window that goes on the outside of here. So let's glue those together. And on the back side, you have these little pieces right here. I need to trim, trim them up just a tad here first. A couple of them. I finally did put a new blade in my machine. I should have done that before I cut all this white, but well, we try to get our money's worth out of those blades, don't we? All right. So you're going to just do, I think I'm going to use the, um, the score tape. This will be easy. And I want to run one piece down this side and one piece down this side. And a piece across this bottom and a little piece across the top Okay, on the outside, this window is going to sit right like that. And then on the inside, I'm going to come in and run a piece of score tape along this edge and along this edge. You see how I did that? Take the backing off. And then these little pieces, we're going to take them and starting here, a little bit up from there at the bottom, just apply them. Here's my good side leaving just a tiny little crack between them. Just like that. And if you want, just to make double sure they don't go anywhere, but they won't probably, you can add another piece of score tape on top. 
and leave the backing on it. So now you can see what that does for our window. It gives it a slatted effect. And then we have this one little piece here. Yeah. That fits down on top. Oh, my wrist is really bothering me. Out there to give it a little more dimension and so now I'm going to use my distress ink and I'm going to kind of go around the edges of this You could go ahead and fold this together if you wanted to first. And now I'm going to add some score tape here along this edge. A little tab. Close this up. I'm going to start at the bottom, make sure that's secured, and then close the rest of it up. Once I know that's good, I'm going to burnish it a little. And there we have our little steeple that will go up on top. And you want to wait to attach this until you get your trims around this part. So, um, and if you wind up with a little tiny hole up here at the top, I didn't on this one. On this one I did. I just stuck a tiny micro brad in the top. So you can add that if you want or not. So the next thing we'll do on that, this piece, would be to um, add our um, siding. So I'm not going to make you, I've already showed you how to do the siding, but I have to finish that before I can go ahead with it. So I'm going to stop and um, do my siding and finish this up. When I get back to ready to do the trim on it, then I'll come back and show you how I did that. And so I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back. And as you can see, I've added my, or constructed this, and added my um, siding to it. Uh, this piece, after we constructed it, I just simply added glue around the bottom edges of it and attached it to the top of this uh, tower base. And then I've added the little piece of white trim around the window here. So this is all ready to go. Our box, um, earlier, we had finished it up and added all of the siding to it, and we had started the trim around this little piece. So now, we're going to go ahead and add, actually, I think we're going to work on the roof, because I don't want to really add this trim until I have the roof on, so that I make sure that it gets all up there between this and the roof. So we'll wait on this for right now. And the roof, we'll go ahead to, with the roof. So um, you have two pieces of cardstock. And then you have a long piece with a score, which is a construction strip. Or, or the, 
this is the top part. And then you have four pieces cut from the brown craft board. These are the roof sections. And I did, in the kit, it only shows uh, two of each, I think, or one of each. But I went ahead and um, cut double thicknesses to give it more um, strength. So you want to take first, and this is our construction strip for the, um, the roof. So the first thing is I want to connect these two pieces together. And I'm going to do that with score tape. Just by doing it around the edges. and one piece in the center. So I'll go ahead and do this one while I'm at it. Then we're going to connect these two together and connect these two together. Okay, now we're going to take and add this piece on top of here and this piece on top of here. And we really should go ahead and cut two more of these to do the underside as well. I know that you won't see this portion, but you will see up around the edges. Those will be showing. So you really kind of want to keep those the same color. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to cut two more of these pieces and then I'll be back. To connect the two pieces, you'll use this construction strip and you just want to fold it on the lines, the score line. This was an old one I had, you can tell it's messed up, but it doesn't matter. Then you're going to add score tape as close to this edge as you can get it because you're going to put two rows and again as close to the edge here Now, you can pull this tape off and use another layer of this, which is what I'm going to do. Or if you have the smaller, you can, um, the smaller score tape, you can add a row of it. So I'm going to pull that off. Now I'm going to come back and add another piece up next to the, um, the raised area from where it was bent. Now 
you don't really want to go over that part. You just want to come up next to it. Oops. Kind of really sticky today. So you can see my raised areas in the center between these two pieces. So you can see how close I've put them together. And I'm going to take that. And that. And I want to pick out the best sides. I think I'll use that side. And put the best sides facing down. And you want you want to go ahead and just apply this right up next to the very edge. Just like that. So you've got it right up next to this edge. Push down on here. And you're going to trim this excess off. And now you're going to take the other piece, hold this flat down, butt this piece up next to the other piece so that they're even. Hold it in place and then flop this piece over onto the second board. And now you want to burnish that really good. Now that makes your roof. This piece folds in half. Yeah. Just like that. And once you get your shingles on, this piece will glue on top to cover that raw edge. And then once that's together, if I can hold it up here, once that's together, your steeple will sit right on top. Just like that. So we're going to wait on this piece until we get our shingles put on. And I think I'll go ahead and put my shingles on when they're down flat like this. Just because it's easier to trim it off that way. And then when you get ready to add this piece to your building, all you do is you want to add glue up along this edge, this edge here, and along these sides, and lay your roof on top. Um, <clears throat> if that doesn't work for you, you can make another one of these construction strips and add it along the sides here and add some here and once you add your roof on you can flip this over because it's hollow and it help it and then attach your your strips that way so it's either one either way you want to do it um, will be fine but when you place your roof on you just want to make sure that you've got even amount of space here and here towards the inside area so you have the over overhang and um, you will have an even amount down here. So to attach your um, your um, ah, shingles, you want to take and add score tape. Now, you can use glue on this. Again, it gets really wet. So, if you have score tape, I would suggest using that. And you just want to apply your strip on the back side. Right up next to the edge. I'm going to do two of these so you can see how you apply them. And you'd want to add your tape to the, the strips, not 
the base because if you add it to the base, it'll be sticky in between these little grooves. And it also will use less tape. Okay, so I'm going to pull this backing off. This first piece. And I'm going to apply it so that this part of the um, shingle is flush with the bottom here. I'm just going to start at one end. Carefully add it. And then I'm going to trim it off. Yeah. Right next to the edge. And I'm going to set this to the side, kind of, and hang on to it because I might use it later on. Because when you apply your second row, you're going to go and it will overhang onto this first row. So here, hopefully you can see the, the first row. Now I'll do the second row. And you want to start to where this piece overlaps onto where there's a gap. So you'll be off the side on the left to start. And you want to bring it down just to the top of where that gap is. And you want to try to get these as straight as you can. They don't have to be perfect, but try to get them roughly straight. Now you should be able to see where the second piece is and hopefully see here's the first piece, here's the gap, and here's the gap. So you can tell they're, they're opposites. You're staggering the shingle sections. So when you come back and add your third row, you're going to do the same thing. Place this part in the center of where this gap is and continue and it will be um, staggered. So that's all you do and just keep adding those all the way to the top. Now you may wind up even at the top, you may not. If you don't and there's just a little sliver, don't worry about it. Don't add another strip just to cover that sliver because this is going to come down and cover at least the width or most of the width of a, of a shingle. So I'll stop here let you go ahead and do your shingles. I'll do mine and we'll come back and we'll attach this to the church base and then attach our steeple. And then the last thing will be to add our other trim pieces and finish up our trim. So I'll see you in a few minutes.